Welcome back, you guys. I'm gonna be working some Georgia Jasper today. This is a tab of some raw Georgia Jasper. Uh, we call this wood grain uh, material here. And it might have some little um, cavity areas as we go through, but we're gonna see what we can do. Uh, length, looking at about eight and three quarters, maybe a tad bit more. And we got our sweet tea. So we're ready to go. Now, how do I want to approach this? Let me see what kind of boppers I have with me. I think I'm going to go ahead and start with this bopper here. This is going to be our length. And so we're just going to shave off some flakes. Now, this is some raw material, so it'll act a little bit different than heated jasper wood. but we're gonna see what we can do. I got this from Jeff Head, and Jeff is a really, really good guy. Turn my hat back up here. Um, I don't know if he has any tabs like this at the moment. Um, but it's some really good material. I love this stuff here. Two good pieces there. Now, something you'll see with the Jasper is a lot of different layers. And you'll see this golden area here, more brown, than even a darker brown once it rolls through there. And that just comes with the, um, how the silica was laid as it was uh, being formed. So I wanna overshoot to this back edge, but I don't wanna overshoot the entire piece because this is our the back of our length here. Okay, so stop just short of rolling over. We got a good, uh, good patty there. All right. Now, interestingly enough, with uh, Georgia Flint River, um, a lot of the patination is red, where it's patinaed on the outside, uh, but this one patinas blue. And I think that's really, really pretty, and definitely unique. We're going to see if we can make us a point of some kind. Um, as many of you know, I love making pickwick points. That's a personal favorite of mine. So uh, we definitely got enough in this piece to make a pickwick. First, I need to make sure my dog's here. Pete! Hip. There he is. Okay, so we're gonna draw this side in so we can keep this being the base. Comes with a little mud, I reckon. It just rains, so. Uh, a lot of this kind of turns to mud. Flip this over here. But yeah, we call this wood grain because you see all the different grains in the stone. It's not wood. It's just a, technically it's jasper, but, and that's the correct term, but it's in the coastal formation of chert. So it's just a dense, opaque chert in my observation, my humble observation. I'll get rid of this corner here. I already know my hands are gonna get kind of muddy. <laughs> this comes from a very muddy spot. Okay. Well, we got a big lip here. And even though this platform looks odd right here, um, it kind of breaks one of the rules of flint napping. You can still hit on a platform like that, believe it or not. Um, as long as you hit close to the previous fracture. So 
So it's one of those odd rules that can be broken, even though it's not a proper platform. Um, if you hit straight down, it can release. Um, as long as you hit, if you hit like right here, it's not gonna work. But if you hit down, just braise it straight down next to that platform, it, it will remove if there's enough, uh, enough there. Now it won't remove the prettiest flake, but if you're in a little bit of a bind, you can definitely get rid of that, even though that's not a good platform. It's more curved this way than it is a, a platform should, should look like. This, however, is a good platform though. Got a good angle to strike from. And I'm actually gonna set the platform up just a little bit, prepare the edge. Not that it needs it. It might even overshoot, and that's fine if it does. It might even catch this back edge here. Which it didn't. I think I was a little bit too timid there, and that's why it didn't remove all the way. But I won't be timid on this hit. I think some folks are a little bit scared of Jasper because it's formed in these layers. And that makes sense. Sometimes you can have seams throughout. But what makes a, a good napper is that you're able to get past those and come out with a really beautiful point. And so that's gonna be our goal with this video. So as we're reducing this tab. I'm trying to make a nice point in the process. The base wasn't very flat, so sometimes I'll remove a little bit off the base because it needs a little bit of flatness there. Let's see if I can do this here. Making a little platform. Let's see if this works. It might not. Okay, it did. Ooh, cause an internal fracture. I don't think it went too far. No, we're good, we're good. It cleared up pretty easy. Okay. Now I like this chert a little bit better. That's on this side. Usually the more golden the color, uh, the easier it is to nap. Although this stuff can be slick, this lighter brown. I like the golden a little bit more. So I'm gonna remove off of this face. And just like with a lot of rocks, sometimes where the cortex is, the best stuff is right under it. But in this case, it was a tab, so really it's decent on both sides. Just a matter of preference, which side you want to pick. Feather flake here. Just feathering it in. The only way this one will work is if I go high. If I'm try to create some convexity first. Don't want to crush one of my better platforms here, which it might happen anyways. No, we're good. You'll notice I'm also pushing in. And notice how on the golden area, it just flakes right over. Um, with these boppers, I, I push in most of the time. That's typically how I use them. But people use them different. They'll, they'll swing them to the side like this, um, or they'll do this, but I, I try to go in as, as much as I can, if the platform's okay. And if the platform's okay, it'll do a really good job 
But in this case, this, this might work out well, might not. Yeah, it dove in a little bit. Wasn't the best platform, but we'll make do. And as you get into it, you start seeing the different layers come through. And I love that. One part of me loves the consistent parts of the rock. The other one loves seeing the variety. And I think when the stone's complete, when the point is complete, I'd rather there be some variety in there. It makes it makes it a really unique, special point. Mm. Now, even on some raw stuff, you can come across some crust, and that's pretty typical. Pretty much any rock. But it will happen. So you gotta prepare for that and try to figure out ways around it. Okay. We've got a backwards platform here. Platform will shoot this way. Really it's one that this bopper is capable of. I'm not sure if I want to use this buffer though. Let me see here. No, I don't. It's not a not as good a platform as I think. Yeah. Had the angle but not the power. Same thing there, but that one worked. How do I want to attack this? Probably from here. I can use the big buffer on this one too. Try to shoot this across the piece if I can. Yeah, there we go. Again, some crust there in the middle. Um, that's to be expected. It's just where the layers come together. Um, that's all that is. This is where the layers come together. That's why I like the consistency. Sometimes better than the than the variety. Now you can heat this material. It takes heat fairly well, um, and it can get really, really glossy. And with that comes it getting also really fragile as well. But it does take heat very well. So it's not one of those rocks you cannot heat. Notice here at the tip, it's getting into that yellower stuff. This is such dense rock. It's much different than uh, other chert that we have down here because it's, it's jasper, it's different. Now, whenever you heat it up, it doesn't feel as dense. It feels really, really good. But we're gonna work this raw just to prove that you can. And prove to myself. Even though heating this stuff up is, is a dream come true. I just wanna put myself through torture, I guess. <laughs> give, give myself a challenge. Again, I'm wanting to get up into this more solid, better material. Mm, not good. Not good.
probably tell just how dense it was and the power it took to make that plate drive off. This one probably won't drive as far. Oh, it did. I was skeptical. Skeptical of this one too. It worked out. Okay. Back to the other side for a minute. Again, that's not even a viable platform, so I'm not even going to try. Sorry, there's a lot of traffic going on through here. Sorry about the background noise. Yeah, right there by the cortex is going to be the slicker part for uh, for working this thing raw. That's going to be the best best stuff right there. So let's see if we can get rid of some of this, this rough area here. That's the goal. Looks like we're gonna have to bevel it, hit off this side first. And with how dense the stone is, I'm still prompted to use this, this solid copper head billet. It looks a little bit more clean on that side. But nonetheless, we'll make us a good point either way. Got a big dip here. Try to get the dip out. Now you can see why we call it wood grain with that stripe there. There's all little layers go through it. That's how you saw it on this side, just layer after layer after layer after layer. This side, we're working through the you know, working through the layers. That's why you get all these pockets in the middle and that's when it can become a challenge. There's a crack there maybe. Yeah, this whole rock's gonna be a challenge now. 
What I might do is set it down and come back to it later. Heat it up and then do the best I can with it. I mean, I can continue working it like this pretty easily, but with all the layers, I'm bound to get hung up. And with all the hard strikes I'm having to hit, I'm bound to see right there, there's a cavity. Was able to run through it. Let's see a lot of it there and then just golden on the backside. This up here near the cortex is way better. Way easier to now. And this up here near the tip is pretty brutal as well. You get a lot of force. You can see just the chatter there. It's almost like working raw coral, that same kind of vibe. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop this video short. And I'm gonna heat this joker up. Probably not a ton. Well, Jasper can get a lot of heat. But this one I probably won't heat very, very much. Come back to it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make another video working some Tallahatta Quartzite. And I can definitely do that start to finish. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. But I appreciate y'all watching. I at least got it to this stage of, uh, of a biface, kinda. We're still at eight and three quarters, so we're still pretty good. Got some of that blue on the base. Anyways, all right, catch you on the next video. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all watching as always.